stand and worship and do this one song. So everybody where you are, we're going to stand, we're going to sing, we're going to celebrate. All right? We are a chosen generation called for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. We are a chosen generation called for to show his excellence. All I for life God has given me I know who I am I know who God says I am what he says I am where he says I'm at I know who I know who God says I am what he says I am where he says I'm at I all right we're not gonna look like we know who we are so we're here to celebrate and to have a good time the house of the Lord. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. And so we're going to lift up our prayers. We're not too cute for praise the Lord. We are not too pretty to praise the Lord. So together, let everybody clap hand, wave hand, rock your body. It is our time to celebrate God. We are a chosen generation. God for to show us. I don't hear you singing. What, what he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. Come on, sing with your attitude. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the official start of the International Conference of the, Un of the Church of the United Brethren in Christ. This robust denomination is blessed to be a total congregation of about 50,000 people in about 500 churches in 19 different churches countries. That means we have brothers and sisters all over the world. Our denomination started with just one statement. We are brethren. We open this international conference with our flag ceremony.
countries in alphabetical order. Canada, China, Costa Rica, El Salvador, France, Germany, Guatemala, Haiti, Honduras, Hong Kong, India, Liberia, Macau, Mexico, Nicaragua, Sierra Leone, Thailand, the United States of America, and our host country for this year, Jamaica. We ask you now to stand for the playing of the national anthem of Jamaica. You may be seated. Walk one. Bienvenidos. Welcome in. Quanghing. Salud o bienvenue. Welcome to each and every one of you. We are pleased you have you are here to join us. We're happy that you are here to sing, to dance, to celebrate Christ, and to share the fellowship we hold so dear. We are brethren. We, we are, are one. one. United in Christ, we share a unique bond. We are brothers. We, we are sisters. Spreading the gospel far and wide to lost sinners. Christ at center, make him known, is the mantra we all bear. We, we pray, pray this time spent, spent together will reignite the passion we all share. Our hearts are filled with the joy that you chose to join us here. We are honored to be your guests, to be your hosts for this grand affair. We pray your souls will be encouraged as you enjoy this spiritual retreat and that you will leave here fully charged to trample the enemy under your feet. In Jamaica, we've started rebuilding with Christ as the firm foundation, continuing the legacy set before us as we work towards our glorious final destination. We hope to encourage you and have you inspire us as we work to achieve our mission. Oh, and make sure you enjoy the food. After all, it's a mini vacation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a taste of our culture as, as we open this conference, conference with this international, international salute. salute. Wagwan. We'll come in. Huang Hing. Salute or bienvenue. Welcome to all of you.
Bless the Lord. What a wonderful time we've been having in the house of the Lord. If you've been enjoying yourself in the presence of the Lord, just put your hands together. The Lord has been good. The Lord has been good. And we will continue to give him praise. We continue to glorify his name because he deserves every worship. Bless the name of the Lord.
Bless the name of the Lord. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a wonderful time in the life of the Church of the United Brethren in Christ Jamaica Conference. This 
is a time that we have been hoping for many years ago. And we have planned, we have worked, and thank God, in spite of COVID that set us back in 2020, here we are in 2023 in our 72nd annual conference. Also, our 53rd general conference, and we sometimes make reference to it as international conference. Of course, with all our international delegates that were in the morning service and who were duly welcomed and identified. Just for those who may have missed it this morning, it is my profound privilege to welcome all of you again this afternoon as we celebrate what God has done, what God is doing even now as we worship, and what God is going to do for us as we continue to serve him through this wonderful denomination. Indeed, we are brethren. And scripture tells us, behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. What do you say? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his wonderful name. Okay, we must keep the program and the worship moving. And so we are going to invite to do our scripture lesson this afternoon. None other but our dear sister Janet Smith. She'll come at this time, and while she comes, you're preparing to follow her as she reads from Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. We bless the Lord. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Our faith is built up by the word, it comes by the word, and so how important it is. And here we go, as she reads for us from Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47. Good afternoon, saints in Christ, friends, brethren, all. Our scripture reading comes to us from Acts chapter 2, and I'll be reading from verse 42 to 47, and I ask you to stand as we read the word of God. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to everyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. And we honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, we are preparing to have a very special item that's coming out of Hope Church of the United Brethren in Christ. And this, of course, sign language piece, they are the winners of this year youth rally in the category of the sign language. So we are inviting them to come as the stage is cleared as the minister to us. Then we should also prepare for another winner 
in the 2023 Youth Rally, which is Gabriel Dyer Youth Rally Senior Solo, which will come immediately after the signers. Put your hands together for them. Welcome them as they come. Oh, there they come all dressed in their costume, looking beautiful. Bless the Lord. Here they go. No, no, no. This can't work. We need a revival.
Hallelujah. What a performance. We bless the Lord for them. As this second piece from the youth rally comes to present to us, we bear in mind that this is just an indication to us of what praises to God will be like when we get to glory. Sister Gabriel Dyer is coming with the senior solo. And my brothers and sisters, we bear in mind that as part of the redeemed, we continue to praise the Lord in preparation for eternity. Here she goes as she sings. Praise God. so much we have lost as we look down the roads where all the prodigals have walked one by one the enemy has whispered lies and led them off as But we know that you are God, yours is the victory. And we know that there's more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. Yeah.
Hallelujah. And we are not just here celebrating our 72nd annual conference and 53rd international conference, but we are hoping that there will be individuals who do not know Jesus Christ will come into a relationship with him because that is what we are all about. Kingdom building. What do you say? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We have two greetings coming up, my brothers and my sisters. One from one of our former denominational head, Reverend Dr. Lloyd Spencer, retired and resides in the United States because he could not come. He ha we have designated Reverend Andrew Blake to bring his greetings, and we invite him to come at this time to bring the greetings from our dear brother, Reverend Dr. Lloyd Spencer. And immediately after, Reverend Blake gives greeting for Reverend Spencer, I invite our U.S. Bishop, Bishop Todd Fetters, to come and greet us as well. The floor is yours. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Greetings. Massive. We look good. Yes. We feel good? Yes. Belly full? No. <laughs> Give God praise anyway. I like to say it could be worse. You could be hungry. All right. Uh, greetings from our Reverend Dr. Lloyd Spencer. As you heard, he is now currently residing overseas and knowing him his mind his heart is right here this day of our 72nd annual conference let me read it get out of the way so that other things can happen and it reads christian greetings to the 72nd annual conference of the church of the united brethren in christ jamaica I greet our presiding bishop, Reverend Darren Larmon, other bishops, pastors, delegates, visitors to the international conference and congregation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, we have come this far by faith, leaning on our blessed Lord. As we embark on this, the year of rebuilding, may all be willing to cooperate in the building process, praise God, so that the Jamaica Conference may grow from strength to strength. Blessings on all for a wonderful day of sweet fellowship and communion in the presence of our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon. It is my delight to be here with you, along with the rest of the uh, international leadership from around the world. What an honor to be able to worship with you, to hear Pastor, uh, Bishop Brian uh, share a message today, and also just be a part of the hospitality of Jamaica. 
conference and, and Bishop Larmon. You know, from the United States, I represent a whole host of individuals who would be probably jealous of me being right here right now because when we left yesterday, snow was flying. So we're happy to be here for this moment. But the other thing they would want me to say to you is greetings in the name of Christ. We are thrilled about our family around the world. We represent a denomination that is 255 years old. That's really old. But that's also a testament to the faithfulness of God who has an incredible track record of changing lives, of healing families, of healing individuals. They gave us three enduring commitments. They gave us a commitment to the gospel. Our early four parents were white hot passion about the gospel. And when you look at the logo over this shoulder of me, you see the cross. That is the message of the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ. They gave us a commitment not just to the gospel that made us spiritually alive, but they gave us a commitment to unity where we are relationally connected to one another, brothers and sisters in Jesus. And so when I think about saying United Brethren in Christ in the U.S., I always talk in terms of the family, the United Brethren family. When you look at this logo behind me, you see two individuals arm in arm. That's the symbol of unity, but in between them is a flame, which is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, which represents the third co commitment we were given. Not just to the gospel that made us spiritually alive, not just to uh, unity, which, which reminds us that we're relationally connected to one another, but to the mission, that we are engaged in the mission without any being ashamed that we are being led by the superintending power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. That's our story. That's what we've been given. And we have been given that in Christ. The last thing I'll leave with you is just to simply remind you that when we think about being united brethren in Christ, that's our address. Where do we live? We live in Christ. And so my wife is in Huntington, Indiana right now, but we are together in Christ. Our churches are in the U.S., but we're together in Christ. My father went to heaven, and last fall, we're together in Christ, and that doesn't make him feel so far away. So don't forget it. Wherever you may be, Jamaica, Guatemala, Canada, U.S., any of the other countries, we are together. You say it with me, in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord for those greetings from these men of God, men who have grown to love God and have served the Lord with all of their hearts and with all of their minds, intellectually, in terms of meditation as well, and have served the Lord with all of their strength. They energized their service to God, 250 years. Well, according to the Jamaican saying, we not just come, we are a long time. And as long as the Lord tarries, we are going to be here, generation after generation, proclaiming the good news of salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a number of things yet to get done this afternoon, and I must move on. We have the message to be presented by our own bishop, and we have an ordination service and an acknowledgement of a minister that have moved up to annual conference license. And so I take a moment or two to say a few things about our beloved bishop. I must admit to you that if it were in his power, he would just come up and preach and have nothing said about him. But we could have none of that. And so I say to you that Bishop Baron Sean Lahman is as one of our 
late former overseas bishop, describes the United Brethren pastors. He's one of our homegrown. I add an adjective to that and say he is one of our good homegrown pastors in Church of the United Brethren in Christ Jamaica Conference. Our bishop was schooled in theology by two excellent institutions. One former Jamaica Bible College, JBC, now Regent College of the Caribbean in Mandeville, and the Jamaica Theological Seminary, JTS, in Kingston, Jamaica. That means that his theology is good. Amen? Praise God. Our bishop is married. Married to the love of his heart, Andrea. He fathered two children, two daughters, that are growing, that have grown, and it's growing wonderfully. I must say that to my sure knowledge, Bishop Laman loves the Lord. Hallelujah. He loves his family. And I must put it to you, brothers and sisters, that he loves the church of the United Brethren in Christ. He was born in it. <laughs> Natural birth. <laughs> he was born in it. Spiritual birth. And he is, has been growing in it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so he loves God. So the man that is coming to us, the man that is our bishop, I would say, brothers and sisters, our church here in Jamaica is in good hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to do one more little thing, and I'm just going to pray for him. And after I pray for him, we're going to have one more special item. And that will be coming from Carpenter's Memorial in Golden Spring. Let us pray. I invite you all to stand, all you beautiful people. I hope that the online audience will, will get a chance to see how this auditorium is packed out. Room full, all full. But although the statement concludes with not a spoonful, we are very creative as Jamaicans. If somebody else come, we can create in our own way a little more room for them. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are our God. You are our eternal God. The God of yesterday, the great creator. The God of today, the great sustainer. And the God of the future. You have us in your hands. And so, Lord, in addition to thanking you another time for this great church and, and this great conference and the great international conference which begins tomorrow. We thank you, Lord, for our bishop and speaker. Bishop Darren Sean Lawman. Lord, you know him by name and by nature. You know how he has prepared and how you have exercised his heart to share with us. We pray, Lord, in a very special way that yet for another time you will unctionize him firstly for your glory and Lord for the benefit of, of us as we worship and as we wait upon you 
to minister to us. Lord, we thank you. Bless your word to our hearts and bring glory to your wonderful name. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Golden Spring, come on up and minister to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
every voice everywhere. Let us stand and raise the hallelujah unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. This is our year of rebuilding. This is our year of rebuilding. And we're walking into that rebuilding. Let us worship as one body, one nation, one voice under God. Let's raise a hallelujah in this sanctuary. Let us lift up the name of the most high God. At this time, we make welcome the Bishop of the United Brethren in Christ Church Jamaica Conference or presiding Bishop Darren S. Larmond. Praise God. Lift your hands in worship. Lift your voices in praise. Hallelujah. The church of God is alive and well. Amen. Brothers and sisters, good afternoon. This is indeed a wonderful experience in the presence of the Lord. Amen? They gave me time, you know. They gave me time. As in a limited amount of time to share with you this evening. I want to add to the welcome. It's been a long time. And as the song, good old Jamaican song says, a long, 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 long time. Finish it for me. Aye, long time, we don't have no nice time. And uh, I'm very happy to be here, very happy to be joined by so many of you from across this conference. Uh, it, is, it has been a while since we rented a thousand chairs and used them all. So we give God thanks. I'm grateful that God would have had it that the international delegation is here in Jamaica for general conference. We welcome you to Jamaica and we will leave the doors open when you leave so that you can come back at any time. It is our pleasure as a national conference to be hosting the general conference of this August body of 255 years. A mighty long way. God, you have brought us a mighty long way. Thanks to those who spread the news like wildfire that this is a conference to be. And from Itaburil to Burnt Savannah, we are here. Can't call all the names, so I just went from one end to the other. But I must mention a little spot in the central part of Jamaica, who has persons coming to conference for the very first time. Just a prospect it is, but we have at least three persons from the community of Gimme Me Bit uh, here. <laughs> Under the vision and leadership of Reverend Shaw, and some of us were invited over there to participate in that prospect uh, in the childhood home of Bishop Winston Smith. 
And um, God would have had it that his mother, in the evening of her life, gave her heart to the Lord. And that became a catalyst for what is happening in that community. So we give God thanks. Amen. Pray for them. Pray for that prospect. And uh, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church of God. Thank you, Sister Smith, for reading from Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 to 47. That's the passage for our focus this afternoon. Speak, Lord, in spite of who I am. Amen. The theme, Revive, Renew, Rebuild, is two years old now. We spent the first year focusing on revival, another year on renewal, and this year our focus will be on the third and final part of this three-part theme, rebuild. Indeed, this year, this conference year, has been dubbed the year of rebuilding. And I listen carefully as different persons give their own perceptions and attach their own understanding of what, what this aspect of the theme really means. I must admit that revival and renewal were pretty straightforward and truth be told were handled with relative ease. But we hear many and varied versions and slants of what this rebuilding process looks like. Thankfully, through Bishop Magnus, we heard yet another as we focus on building. In this year of rebuilding, my brothers and my sisters, what are we rebuilding? Are we suggesting that we no longer have a church? Hence the need to rebuild? I think not. In fact, if that were the case, then we would have some degree of difficulty explaining what Jesus himself said in Matthew 16 and verse 18 and so very well executed there by the dance group. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We therefore cannot suggest in any way, shape, or form that the gates of hell have prevailed against the church that Christ is building. You see, beloved, with any construction project, with any renovation or home improvement exercise, there may be from time to time the need to rebuild a certain section of the structure. Maybe all windows need to be upgraded so that light can come in and fill the space. Maybe some small entrance may need to be replaced or a, a wider and more inviting entrance place there. There are times when the foundations may have gotten weak based on the shifting of the ground or some other external factor. And this necess necessitates going right to the very foundations and having the confidence to rebuild. Beloved, let me cut to the chase. In the case of the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Jamaica Conference, and perhaps true also for a number of other communities of faith, the time has come for some serious home improvement. The time has come for some renovation. The time has come for some well-needed repairs and rebuilding. The good thing is that 
we have a blueprint on which to build. We have the original prints on which to build. And I want to tell you that in this passage of scripture that was read to us from Acts chapter 2, verse 42 and verse 47, I found some essentials for rebuilding. And so lend me your ears, my brothers and my sisters, as for the next few moments we look at this passage and it outlines very clearly some essentials for rebuilding. The word of God says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions and gave to anyone who had a need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily. If we want to pay keen attention to the essentials of rebuilding, then we need to look at the original structure. We need to look, and I often say to the congregation to which I've been assigned, we need to get back to the basics and look at what God did in the early church. I am amazed at how the church just exploded in its growth, a, a movement that caught on on the whole world. And we can look at our own history as a church of the United Brethren in Christ in Jamaica. And look what God wrought in the days when not everybody drove a car. In the days when there was not much electricity. But when I read Jerry Datima's book, What God Has Wrought, you see the accounts of persons standing on the outside of meeting places because there was no room inside. And we have a witness because our dear sister Isilda Roach, can you stand, sister? She's enshrined in that history. At 94 years old, she has been to every single conference of the Church of the United Brethren in Christ. She walked with James B. O'Sullivan. They trod the hills of Mount Pleasant and Mount Prospect. I say, we have a blueprint. And we don't need to look very far, beloved, in this year of rebuilding. What is it that made growth so explosive then? But just incremental now. What is it that they did that we are not doing? Could it be that we don't have enough programs to attract different demographic groups? I think not. Is it that we are not exposed to the word? No. Could it be that we have not been trained in evangelism and discipleship? No. So what is it about the early church that caused them to have that kind of explosive growth? And how, can they, how could they have achieved so much with so little? Brothers and sisters, I believe that the answers are right here in this little passage of scripture. So today I'm making a call. I'm calling for the fellow workers, fellow tradesmen and women 
Laborers all, I want you to help me to read the plan that is outlined here today. And hopefully this exercise will help us in the rebuilding exercise and will cause us to experience the explosion in the church of the United Brethren in Christ. So let's look at the essentials for rebuilding. Verse 42 of the text begins by saying they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. I want to suggest that the first essential for rebuilding is a devotion to the word. We must recognize as a church the importance of the word of God. And that is why we don't preach opinion. And that is why we don't have uh, motivational speakers as preachers. But we preach the word of God. We must recognize that it is the word of God that has the power. The word of God has us to understand that it is alive, it is sharp, it is quick. Sharper than any two-edged sword and has the ability to cut through joints and marrows. It is a discerner of the very thoughts and intents of our hearts. The word does not need any help. We must understand that a Christian cannot grow without the word of God. The Christian cannot grow without the word, then the world cannot know without the word. The world cannot come to Christ unless we share the word with them. We need to get back to the point where we treat the word of God like what it really is. It has everything we need for life and godly living. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. And a light unto our path. The word of God is that which guides us. And so we saw those in the early church devoted to the word. And I am suggesting that an essential to rebuilding is a devotion to the word. I believe it is divine providence. Bishop Magnus' points would have centered around the D's. And I'm pretty close to that this evening. The verse 42 went on to suggest that they were not only, they didn't only devote themselves to the apostles' teaching, but to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread. A second essential to examine my brothers and sisters in addition to a devotion to the word is a dedication to fellowship. When I look within this text, what I saw were persons who were deliberate and intentional in fellowshipping one with another. I see in my mind's eye people after they gather for a service or a time of fellowship. They are not in a rush to go. I see them hanging around. I see them asking, how are you? I see them asking, what grade the child is, is in now? And I see them asking some pastors, so when you get in married. But fellowship was important. Important. It was an important ingredient in the building of the church. It was then and it is now. And so if we're going to be serious about rebuilding my brothers and my sisters, then not only should we have a devotion to the word, but a dedication to fellowship. Let's continue on in the very verse. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. A third essential for rebuilding is diligence in prayer. We have to understand that some battles, most battles, are fought on our knees. 
We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. And as such, we cannot fight in the physical. If we fight in the physical, we are indicted in a matter that we're not going to win. It is an exercise in futility. But we can fight our battles on our knees. Our God invited us to himself. He asked us to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. And so in this year of rebuilding, there are those of us who are going to have to get back around the family altar. There are those of us who are going to have to make prayer meeting popular again. There are those of us who are going to understand that communicating with God is essential to the rebuilding of the church. You see, what kind of relationship would you have with your spouse if you just got up in the morning and say good morning and that's it when you're about to fall asleep oh good night it wouldn't be much of a relationship because an in important ingredient in any relationship is communication so it is with our God my brothers and my sisters he is the architect he is the builder of the church the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord so how can we build without consulting with the master architect we have to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that when we get on our knees, we are expressing our complete dependence on God. When we get on our knees, we have to understand that prayer taps into the power of God. When we pray, God is obligated by his own word, by his own nature, to do something about it. So the time has come, my brothers and my sisters, for the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Jamaica Conference, to begin to push P-U-S-H pray until something happens because an important ingredient an essential to the rebuilding process is prayer when we get to verse 44 of the text it says all the believers were together and had everything in common not just a devotion to the word not just a dedication to fellowship not just diligence in prayer but a demonstration of unity a demonstration of unity when we examine the realities of the early church we saw that everyone was in touch with the other that everyone shared the feelings of each other that everyone had concern for each other there was no time for division there was no time for separation they ate together they drank together they had fun together those who mourned mourned together they demonstrated that they were true united brethren and we are a privileged people because we are cut from the same material we are brethren we are united brethren and I dare to say that when we go to heaven the Baptists won't be there the Anglicans won't be there uh -uh, the Presbyterians won't be there the Pentecostals won't be there all that we will see is just a gathering a great united brethren from all over the world we are indicted in a good matter my brothers and my sisters and unity is essential to the rebuilding process so some of us will need to bury some hatchets Some of us will need to understand that the word of God says, forgive me as I forgive those. Some of us are going to have to be deliberate in finding those who have ought against us and make it right. 
Because we cannot rebuild on shaky foundations. It's only a foolish man that builds his house upon the sand. Because when turbulence comes, when the winds and the waves come, it is not going to be able to withstand. But when we build our church and our lives around the idea of unity, we recognize that united we stand and divided we fall. And essential to the rebuilding process, my brothers and my sisters, is a demonstration of unity. Let's look at verse 45. Some persons need their pressure pills right now for this one. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. In other words, a delight in giving. A delight in giving. They cared about the needs of each other. They did more than just cared. They shared. But we exist in a time where selfishness and stinginess and tight fistedness that's my word, has been normalized. I want to challenge us that if we are going to move this church of the United Brethren in Christ to make a conference forward, then we are going to have to begin to give again. And here's my challenge to you, since this is no longer a feature or this cannot be a feature of this exercise because we have no in gathering today. But we have modified our pledge system. And of our over 3,500 members, we're saying to each member of the Jamaica Conference, $1,000 a month for a year. $1,000 per month for a year. Let's say 3,000 of us don't do it. Let's say we only have a half of that doing it. That's 1,500 persons times $1,000 times 12 months. That's $18 million. Can we do it? Can we? All oh, the amens are weak. I know we can do it. These persons were not asked for a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars is really bubblegum money. We chew that for the week. I chew that for the week. We're not asked to sell houses and land and property to give to everyone who are in need, but we are asking that we delight in giving care of the, for the needs of others and not just to give to the church of the united brethren in Christ but to develop an attitude of giving because give and it will come back to you pressed down shaken together and running over there was devotion to the word there was dedication to fellowship Diligence in prayer, the demonstration of unity, a delight in giving. Verse 46, as I rush on, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. There was, as an essential part of that building, which is also essential to the rebuilding, a delivery of sincerity. Sincerity of heart. Genuine and pure intentions. No ulterior motives. Not giving to receive. Not receiving but not giving. But uh, a delivery of sincerity. 
Verse 47. How much time do I have? Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. They, as an essential component to building, which is essential to rebuilding, was a duty in praise. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people was a feature of the early church. And I dare to say that we have so much to give God thanks for that we should be praising and worshiping. Uh, two years ago, we could only speak of annual conference. The Church of the United Brethren in Christ exhibited their confidence in me on the 5th of March, the year 2020. What is 2023 and this is my first conference? My time is almost up. But we have much to give God thanks for. And so we have to understand that if we're going to move this conference, if we're going to move this denomination, then we're going to have to abandon self and we're going to have to attach ourselves to the idea of when the music fades and all is stripped away and we simply come longing just to bring something that is of worth. I'll bring you more than a song because a song in itself is not what you require. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You are looking into my heart. You see my brothers and my sisters, the condition of the heart is the heart of the problem because we don't understand that worship in and of itself is a success story. It's not something that we dress up and do on a Sunday morning. We don't put on our worship when we are coming to church and take it off when we are going home. Worship is a lifestyle. Come on somebody. Every day, every waking moment of my life, I must be giving glory to the King of Kings. Because what praise does, praise is like a bulldozer. Praise push certain things out of the way. If you're having a difficult time, don't split blow sleep sad balloons and sleep, sing slow soft sleeping serenades just begin to praise God just begin to lift him up in worship just begin to shove at the king of kings just begin to exalt him and see if your day does not change now the time has come and it's now when the true worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. We begin to worship God and you see what happens. When the three armies came up against Israel, they did not fight. Weapons were laid aside. The, the, the victory was won with the praise and worship team. Oh, you don't hear me, brothers and sisters. Oh, sometimes when we're just getting ready to have a good little session of praise and worship, you hear that you must wrap up now. But sometimes you're right at the gate, right at the door, right at the entrance to move into a different dimension. My brother Brothers and my sisters. And so we need to adapt the attitude like the psalmist. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, we should adapt that praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. We should adopt an attitude, brothers and sisters, where we get rid of our own selfish ambition, inhibitions and we abandon self and we focus on Jesus. The songwriter says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will become strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. 
worship. Worship. It's not something that starts when the music starts. Oh, come on. What an opportunity for brothers and sisters to spend intimate moments with the king of kings. That's worship. That's worship. That's entering and closing the door behind you and says Jesus are nothing. Hallelujah. It's very essential to the forward movement and the rebuilding of our church. We should enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We should be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. Has he been good to you? Then how comes we have to, we have to beg you to praise the Lord? In our animated culture, how comes we have to say, let the church praise the Lord before we can praise the Lord? How about just breaking out in spontaneous worship and praise when you look at what God has done for you? Now what I know is that worship is contagious. That's for sure. I have a habit maybe a practice each Friday evening if I'm on social media I would type the word Shabbat Shalom and someone asked me on what day do you worship let's say I was asked that question on a Sunday my response is yesterday, I worshipped on a Saturday. And tomorrow, I worship on a Monday. Because our worship must be a part of who we are. God inhabits our praise. You want the church to grow? Worship. Praising God. Recognizing that all that we are and ever hope to be, we owe it to him. Let's run through these essentials again. A devotion to the word. A dedication to fellowship. Diligence in prayer. A demonstration of unity. A delight in giving. Delivery of sincerity and the duty of praise. We hear what the word of God of God says. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. And who? And the Lord. He's the architect. He simply needs us to say yes to his will and to his way. He simply needs us to say, Lord, I am available to you. He simply needs us to carry out the basic essentials of rebuilding. And he will do the adding. <laughs> but oh, we think of all the programs. To get the people to come. We think of all the treats. And the niceties. And the fun times. To get the people to come. But all it takes. Is for us to be where God wants us to be spiritually. All he needs are those who will say. Here am I. Send me. But we have abandoned that thought. In a very 
real sense, we have thrown that out the door. And every task that uh, requires some help, uh, all you can hear is allow someone else to do it. My brother, we need to go and do this task at church. Oh, pastor, let someone else do it. Or we need someone to lead the new ministry in the church. And we see that you have that inclination. Oh, pastor, you know I'm busy. Let someone else do it. And pastor hears the word someone else so much that some of us have to actually go and check the records of the church to see if we can find the member who is called someone else. I don't know about you, Bishop, but someone else is not on the roll where I was assigned. We are his hands and his feet. Let's get to work. Let's get to work, to the work, to the work. We are servants of God. Let us follow the, ma the path that the master has trod. Contained in these few verses, brothers and sisters, are the essentials to the rebuilding process. For they need you. They need us. They need hands and feet. They need bodies. And our attendance here today should really be a turning point. Let this not be a paper theme. Let it not be a waste of resources to print a banner that we can only use for this year. Let's get active, alive, aware, alert, enthusiastic about the work of God because he said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it come on board brothers and sisters we can do it let's do it Hallelujah. To the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the God whom we serve. Yes, we can. And we are going to do it. We are going to devote ourselves to the Word. Hallelujah. We are going to dedicate ourselves to fellowship one with another, with the Lord. Yes, we are going to give diligence to prayer. We are going to demonstrate that we are Christians. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord, not just united brethren by denomination, but we are Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we love one another. Yes, we are going to demonstrate our love. We are going to be, be delighting in giving, giving generously, giving as the Lord prospers us. We are going to be sincere in all of this because the Lord loves sincerity and we have a duty my brothers and my sisters to praise the Lord to praise the Lord as a lifestyle 
We bless God. Bless you, Bishop, for such a great word to us as the Lord has laid on your hearts to challenge us as individuals. And we don't want to leave here saying, oh, what a message that the bishop gave. Wow. <laughs> we ought to leave here by the grace of God saying, I am going to make sure that I, myself, pay more attention to the word. For me and all the other points as he shared with us. Lord Jesus, we thank you again for your word. Spirit of God, we ask that you will cause it to live in us and cause us not only to be hearers, but to be doers individually to be doers so that we will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that the church which comprises of us the church will be rebuilt day by day we thank you Heavenly Father in Jesus' wonderful name we pray all God's people say an energetic amen. amen. Okay, let's go for the amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless his wonderful name. My beloved brothers and sisters, we have now come to a very important session in our 72nd annual conference, and that is the closing session. It is called conference in session. And the person that is responsible for calling the conference in session, it is the bishop. And so I am inviting the bishop to prepare to come and lead us in the closing session of this wonderful Conference, Conference 2023. Bishop Lawman, please come and lead us in this closing session. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for him. And I'll call this 72nd annual conference into session. We have a few matters to deal with. And uh, our aim is to get out of here with some daylight left. Can I get an amen? Yeah. I know I will. Let me recognize uh, our assistant bishop, assistant chairman, Reverend Dr. Brian Wallace, who, along with myself, will preside over this final session of the 72nd annual conference. We wish to proceed with licensing and ordination and at this time, the 72nd Annual Conference invites Pastor Gregory Joseph Anderson, musical pastor, the musical family. wonderful gift to the Church of the United Brethren in Christ to watch and listen him play and having his son beside him on the keyboards 
having his daughter playing the guitar and singing his wife on the praise team. Why don't you pastor my church? Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Jamaica Conference. Annual Conference Minister's License. This is to certify that Pastor Gregory Joseph Anderson has met the requirements prescribed by the discipline to be licensed as an annual conference minister in the Church of the United Brethren in Christ and has been so appointed by the issuing of this license. This certificate is valid so long as his conduct and doctrine conform to the gospel of Christ and its usage by the Church of the United Brethren in Christ. Given at the 72nd Annual Conference of the Jamaica Conference held at Malvern St. Elizabeth on the 10th day of March in the year of our Lord 2023 and installed on Sunday, March 19th in the year of our Lord 2023 at the 72nd Annual Session held here at Kendall Camp and Conference Center, Kendall, Manchester. Brothers and sisters, help me to congratulate our pastor. We also have a token for you, Pastor. Wonderful Bible engraved with your name. And you will use this as a sword of the Spirit. God bless you. We invite the conference secretary, Sister Jacqueline White, to come at this time. Beloved Bishop, Reverend Darren S. Larmon, the Jamaica Conference has made careful inquiry regarding the character, belief, practices, and consecration of Pastor Adrian Lansford Dempster, and is satisfied that he has the necessary qualifications and dedication for advancement to the office of an elder. I therefore, as conference secretary, and by the authority of the 72nd annual conference, present him for ordination. When the little boy expressed his desire to be baptized, there were some concerns. 
he was a good boy, but there was concern over whether he was ready at that tender age to be baptized. Much counseling was done and he, after receiving Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and after being assured of his faith, he was baptized by his home pastor, Pastor Wallace. And it is clear that he never left Dr. Wallace and has not left Dr. Wallace. The little boy is the little boy no more. He has grown, had his heart set on becoming a medical doctor, did well in the sciences at the secondary level and was well on his way. And the Lord said, theology. And here he is today. Dear brother, Adrian Lansford Dempster, the elders of this conference have given you their vote of confidence and trust. After careful examination, they are confident that you are called by God to be the, Christ, to be the Christian ministry and have recommended your ordination to the office of an elder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we enter upon this ceremony which is filled with spiritual significance. Its depth of meaning will be determined largely by your own spiritual response. Therefore, we urge you to accept this honor and the responsibilities of this divine commission in humility and sincere dedication. As an elder, you are entrusted with God's work. You must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, nor violent acts, nor pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, you must be hospitable one towards another, one who loves what is good, one who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. You must hold firmly to the, the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that you can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose. Pleasant afternoon to all. Are you assured that you are inwardly moved by the Holy Spirit to take upon you the office of the ministry to serve God in the Church of the United Brethren in Christ Jamaica Conference to the honor and glory of his name? If so, answer, I trust I am. I trust I am. Reverend Dempster, do you believe the Holy Scripture, Old and New Testament? If so, answer, I do believe them. I do believe them. And will you apply due diligence 
to frame and fashion your life mm -hmm. according to the doctrines of Christ as is understood and practiced in the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Jamaica Conference, and to make yourself as much as lieth in you a wholesome example of the flock of Christ. If so, you will answer, I will, the Lord helping me. I will, the Lord helping me. Thank you. Reverend Dempster, will you obey those whom, those to who, who have charge and government over you, who the Lord has committed thus? And will you follow their godly admonition with a willing and ready mind? If so, answer, I will endeavor through the grace of God to do so. I will endeavor through the grace of God to do so. A few years ago, when it was my time, we didn't have a kneeling pad. I wonder if it was a rite of passage and whether we should, you had none either. No kneeling pad. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to invite all denominational heads, all our bishops, general superintendents, to join us at this time as we together lay hands on Reverend Dempster as Reverend Leroy Martin will pray. Elders, gather around. As the bishops first, bishops first. Let us pray. Gracious God, again we honor you for your doing. We thank you that you're the one who called. You're the one who have done our eternal work. We thank you, almighty God, for your son who have answered the call. And you who have called him, already equipped him. And you who have equipped him will continue to use him for your glory. So today, gracious God, we dedicate him to you. And we pray that the hand of God will rest continually on him. That God, through you and by you, he will do exploit. Father, we thank you that you're going to use him to build your church. And mighty God, as we lay hands on him even now, we pray that such fresh anointing be poured out even now. That God will run through his troop and leap his wall and do the exploit to which you have called him to do. So we dedicate him now to you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the blessed Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I can't recall my prayer being that short either. Reverend Dempster, take thou authority to execute the office of an elder, to preach the word of God, to administer the ordinances, to maintain sound doctrine in the Church of the United Brethren in Christ to make a conference in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Let your loins be girt about, and your lights burning, and you yourself like unto men that wait for their Lord when he shall return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve him. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Church of the United Brethren in Christ Jamaica Conference Certificate of Ordination. This is to certify that Pastor Adrian Lansford Dempster has completed the prescribed course of study for ministers in the Church of the United Brethren in Christ and has fulfilled the requirements for ordination to the office of an elder by the laying on of hands. This certificate is valid, valid so long as his conduct and doctrine conform to the gospel of Christ and its usage as understood by the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Jamaica. Given at the 72nd annual session of our Jamaica conference held at Malvern St. Elizabeth on Friday the 10th of March in the year of our Lord 2023 and installed on the Sunday 19th of March 2023 at the 72nd annual conference session held at Kendall Camp and Conference Center, Kendall, Manchester. Reverend Dempster, Rev. Brothers and sisters, we now transition to the station in committee's report to the 72nd annual conference. This is the report that speaks to our assignment as ministers who have made ourselves available for the work of God through the Church of the United Brethren in Christ. Beginning with the Western District, person appointed as conference superintendent for the Western District will come at this time, Reverend Dr. Brian Wallace. And we will ask our pastors and spouses to uh, just draw close. Dr. Wallace. Oh, maybe I should say that Dr. Wallace has been assigned to the Fleming Memorial Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Battersea. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Presiding Bishop. 
And in the same spirit, I can say that our presiding bishop, Darren Larman, has been assigned to the Salem Church of the United Virgin in Christ Church. He is also assigned to the Craighead Church of the United Brethren in Christ Church, assisted by Pastor Kevin Palmer. Where's Pastor Palmer? Stand, Pastor Palmer. Wonderful. And I'm going to invite Sister Andrea to come, and Sister Wallace is there as well. You know, we can't do the ministry without the ladies, you know. Amen. They help to bear the weight. Amen. Come give God thanks for his servants, the women of God. For uh, Burn Savannah, uh, the pastor assigned to that church is Pastor Carlton Stock. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, well, Pastor, we see it on you. We see it. <laughs> we see it. Amen. Wonderful. The pastor assigned to Malvern, to Lindiver, our church is Pastor Garfield McIntosh. I am beginning to call him the sweet boy of the conference. <laughs> Amen. And praise God, the pastor assigned to Richmond Church of the United Brethren in Christ is now Reverend Adrian Dempster. And his wife is there. Join him as well. Amen. Amen. Where, where is your wife, sir? She's gone. <laughs> Amen. She will soon be here. Amen. She will soon be here to join him on stage. Also, the pastor assigned to Whitney Turn, Church of the United Brethren in Christ, is Reverend Andrew Blake. Amen. Amen. Ah, cheer Lady Dempster, oh man. She coming, man. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 All right. Um, the ladies are, and here we have Candice. Yes, Candice, uh, Pastor Blake's wife. The pastor assigned to the All Side Church of the United Brethren in Christ is Pastor uh, Sherwin Cowens, the music master, and his wife is also here. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, Welcome, Lady Cowens. Yes, well, you skip. Amen, amen, amen. And so uh, these are our pastors for the Western District. And we know that the Lord has already been moving mightily among us. So God bless you, pastors. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Wallace. We move to the Eastern District of United Brethren Churches and the Conference Superintendent assigned to the East District of United Brethren Churches, Reverend Barrington Johnson. As Reverend Johnson comes, we recognize that his shoe size has gotten a little bit bigger this conference here because he has been assigned 
to Bethel, Seaview Gardens, Mount Prospect, and New Gardens. Praise the Lord. I think the scripture says that we can do all things through Christ who will strengthen us. Amen. The bishop just, just preached about unity and togetherness. And we are glad that we have able men in the conference that can assist with the work. To Mount Prospect, the assistant will be our brother, Jeremian Cam Campbell. For new gardens, for new gardens, the assistant will be Pastor Kimo Kiamber. to three other churches but though not big feet or big shoes a small giant Bishop Winston Smith is assigned to Church of United Brethren in Christ Carpenters Church of United Brethren in Christ Hope And Church of United Brethren in Christ, Mount Zion. The next assignee is our former bishop, Bishop Isaac Nugent. He's assigned to Faith Washington Gardens. And the first church in Church of United Brethren in Christ, Jamaica Conference, Mount Pleasant, and he will be assisted by Pastor Jason Ball. Jason Ball just got married. For one of the furthest church we have in the Eastern, church way down in St. Mary, church named Church of United Brethren in Christ, Itobaril, we present to you Pastor Ernest Donaldson. The church in one of the largest community in the Caribbean, Greater Portmore, Victory, will be pastored by Reverend Courtney Morgan. <laughs> Sister Crescenti. And 
the scripture tells us when all remains, there is love. Love Church of United Brethren in Christ will be pastored by Pastor Charles Williams. Reverend Johnson did not get married again, and that's not his wife. His wife is not well. She's recovering nicely, and so his daughter is standing in the gap. We move to the Central District of United Brethren Churches and the conference superintendent assigned to the Central District is Reverend Kenrick Harrison. <laughs> Rev Harrison is also assigned to Mapen and the New Boynes Churches of the United Brethren. For the church, Grace Yorktown, Reverend Norbert Shaw has been assigned. <laughs> Fellowship Hazard, Reverend Leroy Martin has been assigned. Praise Hall Saul, Pastor Gregory Anderson has been assigned. Grace Content, Cubic Content, Pastor William Brown is being assigned as well as Cubic Rhymesbury. Of course, we also acknowledge uh, our brother Demar Parchment, a uh, current Bible student who should graduate from Regent College this year. We ask him to join us. We also ask Reverend Anthony Davis to join us as well as our brother Jermaine Campbell will pray for our pastors and their families. Thank you, Bishop. All protocol observed. Can we please stand? And we are standing in agreement to the prayer. Amen. Dear Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love to those who love him and obey his commands. Lord, we thank you and we come boldly before your throne of grace. We come to you, Father, in no other name 
than in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as we come this day to place in your hands and to commit the pastors and their spouses or their wives, Lord, and ministers and their wives, Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you, Lord, that they would have answered the call, Lord, to ministry. We thank you, Lord God, that they have recognized the gifting of pastoral ministry and gifting of evangelism. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have spoken to them. And Lord God, they have availed themselves to be used by you. Lord, you see the, Lord, you would have known the assignments. Lord, you would have known where they would be assigned, Lord God, to, to do their duties. Lord, we praise you that their congregation will receive them well. We praise you in the name of Jesus that your God, you will bless them, you will strengthen them. Lord, we praise you that you will give them a special anointing. Lord, that anointing that will break every yoke. That anointing, Lord, that will able to propel them, Lord God, to discharge their duties that has been bestowed upon them. Lord, as I stand here this day, Lord God, I praise you in the name of Jesus from the, for all the youngest unto the eldest of them. We praise you that you will grant them strength to persevere in challenging times. Lord, we would have recognized that we are doing ministry in a time and in a situation where Jamaica is waxing colder and colder and Lord God our servants at times they are vulnerable to the attack of the enemy but Lord God as we stand here this morning or this afternoon we praise you Lord that you will stand before them we praise you in the name of Jesus that you will stand behind them Lord God we know their bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and so we praise you Lord God that they will persevere Lord God with the faith knowing Lord God that the enemy will not be able to sift them like weed. We praise you in the name of Jesus that just as all you have placed an edge around Job, so you will place an edge around your ministers. We praise you in the name of Jesus that you will bless them with the peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I praise you that it will rest and abide with them. Lord, I praise you that, Lord God, you will open your heavens and you will grant them wisdom, divine wisdom, Lord. They will be as wise, Lord, to carry out their daily functions in the name of Jesus. But most importantly, Lord, you'll grant them with the spirit of discernment that they will be able to decipher and discern, Lord, attacks of the enemy, Lord God, and they will be able to discern what is good and pleasing to you. Lord, we praise you. That, Lord God, uh, you will, uh, Lord Jesus, uh, grant them the energy, grant them the strength, Lord God, uh, to minister within their communities. Lord, I praise you in the name of Jesus that they will be uh, without reproach. We praise you in the name of Jesus that they will be upright. Lord God, upstanding. Lord, we praise you that their ministry will only not only be confined to the four walls of their church, but their ministry, Lord God, will go into every corner of their community. We praise you in the name of Jesus that if there be maybe any stronghold within that community that is causing the ministry not to go forth, we praise you in the name of Jesus that Lord God you will lift up a standard and in the name of Jesus the word will go forth sharper, quicker than any two-edged sword. 
We praise you in the name of Jesus. That Lord God, you will grant them uh, the strength uh, and the workers uh, to go and work with them in ministry. Lord, we praise you on this year of rebuilding. That Lord God, you will equip them, body, mind, and spirit to rebuild every wall that was been that has been broken to rebuild Lord God the peace Lord God in the fabrics of their community Lord God to rebuild the love in their community to rebuild broken families within the community we praise you in the name of Jesus that they will be obedient to your word we praise you in the name of Jesus that they will not be guilty of quenching the Holy Spirit but Lord God, they will speak the undiluted word of God free from any ornamentation or embellishment. We praise you in the name of Jesus that just as you have anointed Isaiah's lips to declare the word, that they will declare your word unreservedly. Lord, we praise you. We know that when they go back to do the rebuilding, there will be oppositions. But we praise you in the name of Jesus that they, Lord God, will stand resolute. And Lord God, they will persevere and endure the race that is set out before them. We praise you that their wives, Lord, will encourage them. We praise you in the name of Jesus that they will pray them true. We praise you that they will be their encourager. We praise you that the wives will be a strong support system, Lord. And they will understand. And Lord God, we praise you that they will not be guilty of neglecting the wives. Lord, we pray because we know the attacks may come on the family as well. Lord, so when they gone out to minister, we pray, Lord God, that you will stand guard at Lord God the homes, that you will stand guard, Lord God, with the children in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that Lord God, you have you will bless them with peace. Lord God, you will bless them with strength, you will bless them with protection, Lord. And most importantly, Lord, when they go back to minister in their local churches. We praise you that evangelistic trust will be on their minds, Lord. And they will go on the highways. And Lord God, they will do as Matthew 28 says, to declare your word and bring the truth to your people. These and other mercies we ask in Jesus' precious name. You. Thank you very much. At this time, we have just one report to go uh, before we terminate this 72nd annual conference. Uh, I want to just quickly say that for those plastic chairs, white chairs, we're asking as many of our men as possible to help us to stack these chairs as we have to pay a stacking fee if we don't stack them. So um, immediately after the service, we'll just stack them in, in numbers of 25. And, um, and it, it will be a breeze, I'm sure, as we get it done. Um, the resolutions committee is coming at this time to present. Before they come, I want to personally say thanks to the media and communications department of this conference. <laughs> we 
This is a brand new conference committee. We never had this before. Uh, thanks to COVID, <laughs> we see the need. We did not stream because we wanted you all here, but um, some post-production work will be done and um, the services will be available on our different um, media platforms. So um, you can look out for that. And for those who were really asking from overseas, I just would not want to take that chance uh, for you to, to view conference from the comfort of your homes. And so um, you can watch it again from, <laughs> from, the comfort, uh, from the comfort of your homes. So thank you to the media and communications team. Of course, to do a better job than I could ever do, we invite the resolutions committee to move the vote of thanks at this time. Good afternoon, brethren. Report of the Resolution Committee. Chairman Bishop Darren Larman, Vice Chairman Reverend Dr. Brian Wallace, members of the Conference Council, pastors, delegates, specially invited guests, brothers and sisters in Christ. The members of the Resolution Committee extend Christian greetings to you all in the sovereign and saving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow, can you say that with me? 72 years it has been. As a conference, we raise our Ebenezer. As a conference, we can gratefully say, hitherto has the Lord helped us. This milestone of the 72nd conference is nothing short of a monumental testimony of God's providence and the perseverance of the many faithful and committed individuals who served sacrificially. As a conference, we are thankful. The 72nd Annual Conference of the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Jamaica, commenced on Wednesday, March 8th, in the cool hills of Malvern, St. Elizabeth, at our camp and retreat center. Our theme on this auspicious occasion is Revive, Renew, Rebuild, the Year of Rebuilding. This is a very fitting theme for us as a conference. There is in fact a call to rebuild and the need to rebuild the ruins among us and to repair the things that are in despair, both individually and institutionally. Thanks to our business session speakers, namely Reverend Kenrick Harrison, Reverend Barrington Johnson and Reverend Courtney Morgan, whose collective charge to us convicted and challenged us individually and collectively as a conference. We were charged to introspect our lives as we recognize that, ra that revival is important for the rebuilding. We were further admonished that we need to be ignited and reignited. We need the fire as we seek to rebuild as a conference. God's word is very instructive and therein we see there is clearly a clarion call for us to rebuild. We were equally edified and empowered by the word shared over the three days at our business session. Likewise, we would also like to thank our moderators and our pastors, our praise teams, who brought us through each day's proceedings in a most timely manner and who ushered us into the presence of the Lord. 
Our business session was skillfully presided over by our presiding bishop, Reverend Darren Larman, and ably assisted by our vice chairman, Reverend Dr. Brian Wallace, and our parliamentarian, Bishop Isaac Eugene. Under their direction, all reports were presented in a timely manner, following which we had several interactive discussions between both delegates and pastors. Thank you all for giving exemplary service to the Lord and the Church of the United Brethren in Christ. It would be remiss of us not to also express thanks to our on-the-clock timekeeper, Pastor Sherwin Cowans, and our pages, Pastor Jason Ball and Brother Demar Parchman. Thanks to our host pastor, Reverend Garfield McIntosh, and his team for ensuring that we had a comfortable stay. Thanks to Sister Maud Knight and the WMF team, and to Brother Glashin and Brother Glenn, who provided the healthy and scrumptious meals each day, as they did today again. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> the business session was adjourned on Friday, March 10, and resumed today, Sunday, March 19, at Kendall Camp and Conference Center, after three years of not meeting in this fashion. Truly, we are grateful to God. Thanks to the Central District Praise Team who led us here today into the presence of the Lord. Truly the atmosphere was charged. A job well done. Thanks to our moderator, Bishop Winston Smith, who ably guided us through the morning session, and Pastor Charles Williams, who did the prayer of invocation. Reverend Dr. Brian Wallace welcomed us to this, our 72nd annual conference Sunday service here in Manchester. Indeed, we felt very welcomed to the Western District. Thanks to Frank Young, Executive Director of UB Global, who greeted us on behalf of the United Brethren in Christ Churches internationally, and the missionary groups. Thanks to Sister Melissa Donaldson, who did the scripture reading. Thanks to our soloist, Daniel Anderson, Youth Rally Junior Solo winner for the, from the Central District. Job well done. Thanks to Reverend Courtney Morgan, who prayed for the offering. Thanks to Sister Anna K. Levy, who introduced the speaker, and Reverend Leroy Martin, who prayed for him. What a message. What a word it was from Bishop Brian Magnus for this year of rebuilding. It was certainly inspirational and instructive. We were told that in order for us to rebuild, we must first and foremost rebuild our faith. The four D's of rebuilding faith from Mark 5, 25 to 34, which is the woman which covers the story on the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years were. One, rebuilding faith needs determination. Rebuilding faith needs direction. Rebuilding faith needs decision. And rebuilding faith needs declaration. Indeed, truly, we were blessed. Thank you, Bishop Magnus. Special thanks to Reverend Dakers and Reverend Shaw who led us in the Holy Communion service. Ladies and gentlemen, our afternoon session commenced. And it commenced this time for the very first time in my year of coming to conference with our flag bearing ceremony, which comprised the flags from all the countries which UB is a member of the soil. By my count, it was 19. Praise the Lord. We were then ushered into the presence of the Lord by the melodious voices of our sisters from Salem, UB, and skillfully cheered by our veteran, former bishop of the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Reverend. Isaac J. Nugent. To 
all participants and to you, sir, Bishop Eugene, we say thanks for taking us through the proceedings in a timely manner. Thanks to Sister Janet Smith, who read the scripture. Thanks to the churches which performed winning pieces from our youth rally finals. We had Hope Church doing sign language and Carpenter's Memorial Church doing dance. Both pieces were immaculately done. And I must say that the spirit of the Lord moved through their ministry. Thanks to Reverend Andrew Blake, who brought greetings on behalf of Reverend Dr. Lloyd Spencer, and to Bishop Todd Fetters for bringing greetings on behalf of the U.S. National Conference. The Word of God. The Word of God, as spoken by our presiding bishop, was clear and concise. Now, I must confess by my check, I did not have as much points from the message as I got from our secretary. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it was so concise, I missed some. But thanks be to God we have a secretary. <laughs> he did share with us that the essentials for the rebuilding are, and in no particular order, <laughs> devotion to the word, Diligence to prayer, dedication to fellowship, demonstration of unity, delight in giving, delivery of sincerity, and duty of praise. Thank you to our bishop for allowing the Lord to speak to you first, sir, and for delivering the word in such a powerful way. We are blessed. Put your hands together for our bishop. <laughs> Thanks to the media and communication committee who took the charge in planning and organizing this event. This place is looking amazing. Another round of applause for the committed team. <laughs> for the first time in a long while, I feel as if I'm in foreign. We want to thank the team from Salem and Battersea who helped in every way possible to ensure that we had an amazing conference. To them we say thanks. Thanks to Brother Mark Smith and the technical team. <laughs> thanks to Pastor Carlton Scott who provided the PA system and who was our engineer. You can hear me loud and clear, don't? <laughs> Praise the Lord. To the kitchen staff, security, and ancillary workers. To the Kendall Camp and Conference Center, who allowed us to stage this, our 72nd annual conference here today. We say thanks. To our specially invited guests, Bishop Brian Magnus, our international bishop, delegates from Canada, Bishop Todd Fetters from the USA, Director of UB Global, Bishop John from Sierra Leone, Bishop Lopez and delegates, Superintendent from Honduras, Superintendent from Haiti, missionaries from Taiwan. We are blessed to have had you present and participating in this our annual conference Sunday service. I also want to say thanks to the ladies who spoke, who came up here, or Jamaican ladies who came and spoke languages which I didn't understand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Congratulations goes to our pastor, my pastor, Pastor Gregory Anderson, on being given the annual conference license. <laughs> Next up is Elder. Praise the Lord. 
Congratulations to Reverend. Reverend. <laughs> Adrian Dempster on being ordained to the office of an elder. Thanks to Brother Jermaine Campbell who prayed in a powerful way for our pastors and their family. <laughs> Last and certainly not least, brethren in Christ, visitors, friends, members of the United Brethren in Christ churches, we express our profound gratitude to you who came out in your thousands today. Truly, without you, this 72nd milestone would not have been achieved without your presence. Thank you all from a grateful heart. Put your hands together for yourselves. This report is respectfully submitted by yours truly, Gareth Warren, Kevin Palmer, and Sister Dolores Matthews Miller. Thank you very much. Ooh. Thank you very much, Brother Gareth. The report of the resolutions committee is before us for a motion to adopt the report. Moved, seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you very much. And we thank the resolutions committee for their report. The great detail of the report. Uh, we thank you. We also thank those who will stay behind and help to pack the chairs up. Thank you in advance. And of course, tomorrow we start the general conference. The general conference is attended by national leaders and delegates, but we have evening services in which a national leader will be speaking each evening. Based on logistical challenges, we have had to confine the services to the Western District. Our attempt was to uh, take at least one of our service to the Central District, but based on certain circumstances within Central Jamaica at this time, wisdom dictates that we uh, stay in the West. And so tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, 7 to 9 o'clock, we will be having our first evening service at the Fleming Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Battersea. And we're inviting as many of you as possible. If you thought today was nice, come again tomorrow evening for just two hours. And of course, on Tuesday at the Salem Church of the United Brethren in Christ there in New Green. That's Tuesday evening and on Wednesday, we will journey down to Camp Malvern and have our third and final evening service there. It promises to be a blessing as we listen to the word of God and reports from what God is doing in other countries where he has planted the church of the United Brethren in Christ. If you can, please do make it. And um, don't use tired as an excuse uh, because there are some persons who have been working, uh, working, and they have to be there as well. So looking forward to see you, and uh, thank you very much. We now move a motion for the termination of the 72nd Annual Conference. Moved and seconded. All in favor? This 72nd Annual Conference is now terminated. We look forward to the 73rd year as we rebuild. God bless you. God bless you richly. Of course, the media and communications team is asking that 
our pastors and spouses stay behind for more pictures yes stay behind for more uh, pictures Rev Harrison is coming hang on a second oh you're so anxious to pack the chairs up let Rev Harrison pronounce the benediction and we'll pack those chairs in five minutes I'm sure Could you raise your hand with me as we pronounce the benediction? May the peace of God, which passeth all human understanding, guard your hearts and your mind through Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful evening, my brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful conference here. God bless you. Love you.